Aunt Shanaquaqua, please tell me right away what the story is about. The story is about the competition who will find the golden helmet first and become the owner of North America. Maybe they won't find it. Maybe the evil ugly dog and rat will find it first and make everyone their slaves. You will have to listen to the story to the end to find out. Are you ready for adventure? Yes, I am. Donald Duck in the Golden Helmet. Donald is assistant guard in the museum at Duckburg. Donald is bored at work. He has already received three paychecks and nothing has happened yet. The pay is good. There is little work. But Donald loves adventure. He looked at the Viking ship and thought how much fun the Vikings had. He thought about how the Vikings traveled in that old bathtub without GPS. They toured the world hundreds of years before Queen Mary. Some nerd interrupted him and asked where the butterfly collection was. He explained to him, all depressed, thinking that he should start going to therapy. Those old Vikings fought with various animals and savage tribes. And he has to tell the geeks where they can find butterflies. He even forgot that he was a duck and not a man because of his depression pills. The next visitor asked him where the lace and tatting collection was. He had enough of everything. He decided to climb on deck and pretend to be He-Man. He just started pretending and playing. Then he heard some screeching in the boat. He thought it was a big rat, but it was an ugly son of a bitch sniffing around the boat. Donald kicked him out of the ship. The lion ugly dog started to lie that he just wanted to see how the deck was fastened down. Donald had already seen him sniffing around the same Viking ship before. Donald figured out that the ugly dog was looking for something in the ship. All the gold and jewels would have been taken off the ship before the Vikings buried it. Concluded that that son of a bitch was looking for something else. Donald sniffed around the boat with his clever beak and found something hidden in a wooden beam behind a loose peg. It was a map on deerskin with ancient inscriptions. He immediately went to tell the boss about this. The ugly dog saw it and was jealous like the dog because he was looking for it and didn't find it. The duck was smarter. Later, the dog boss explained to Donald what a great historical discovery he found and that the map tells about the voyages of a Viking ship. That ship was commanded by a Viking named Olaf the Blue 900 AD before Eric the Red, and 901 arrived on the coast of North America. The ugly dog was eavesdropping on all this and realized that everything matched and that it was time for action. Boss Dog started jumping for joy, saying that Donald will be famous and the museum too. Millions of people will come to see Olaf's ship and the golden helmet. But the bird that starts to sing early also shits early. Donald told him they must first find the golden helmet for this to be possible. He immediately set out to send an expedition to find the golden helmet. But the ugly son of a bitch interrupted him. The ugly dog entered with a lawyer and introduced himself as Azure Blue, the oldest descendant of Olaf the Blue, and according to some invented law, the map belongs to him. Well, it seems that during the reign of Charlemagne, in 792 AD, the rulers of all the nations gathered in Rome and drafted a law which read, Any man who discovers a new land beyond the sea shall be the owner unless he... Eldest lane is king since Olaf the Blue claimed North America for his own. It now belongs to his nearest of kin. The lawyer of the ugly dog, who was an even uglier rat, asked for a map before arresting them all for trespassing on their property. How can I prove that he is really a descendant of? Asked the boss dog. Ugly rat told him something flick as flack as fumdy to lead him. I don't know what that means. Oh yes, he said it was legal language for how can you prove that he isn't. The ugly dog took the map and said he was going to find the golden helmet and exact tribute from him. His slave. The ugly rat lawyer added hocus, locus, jocus, which means the doorknobs belong to the landlord. The boss dog was worried about everyone. If the ugly dog finds the golden helmet, everyone will be his slaves. Donald thought he could send the police to arrest him, but no one can stop him unless they can keep him from finding the helmet. Donald said he was going to beat him with his club so much that he was going to pee the milk he sucked out of his mother bitch. But the boss dog had a better idea. He remembered the map and drew it. That was impressive. The boss dog said that together they will find that helmet before the ugly dog. The boss dog was determined to find the golden helmet. They are a dog and a duck, but they are no less men than Olaf the Blue. Donald realized it wasn't a joke. Boss Dog said that both of them will take a copy of the map and that Donald will go along the coast and he will go along the land. Either that or slavery. Boss Dog gave Donald a copy of the map and some pocket money for a plane ticket to Newfoundland. From there, they will have to continue across the sea in a small boat like the old Vikings did. Donald crapped his pants.
He thought that nothing exciting ever happens to him. Luckily, he is a tough guy. The boss dog also told him if he finds the golden helmet to throw it into the sea where no one will ever find it. Donald ran home all excited. What will the kids think when he tells them what's cooking? From the door, he told them to start packing to go to Labrador. Nothing was clear to the children. Donald didn't have the nerve to explain to them. The kids didn't know what a Labrador was. They think it's a movie. Donald the crazy nervous duck started banging his head against the wall because he didn't know that his children were so uneducated. But then he realized that they live in the United States of America. That evening. Donald gave his kids geography books on the plane to learn where they are actually going and said they will be little Viking ducks. And so begins the race for the golden helmet. Race that will decide the fate of the people of North America. By morning, Donald has gotten into the spirit of things. Adventure lies ahead. Rip snorting fun like the Vikings had it. No more old moldy smelly museum. From now on the terror of the North Sea, let the weaklings study butterflies and tatting. The children saw through the window that they had arrived in Newfoundland. They soon discovered that the ugly dog had arrived before them and that he was fast. Newfoundland dogs have already barked about how the ugly dog will become the owner of North America. The newspapers have already written about it. He wanted everyone to know about it. He took a gang of newsmen with him. There was even a warship to protect him while he was looking for a helmet. Donald and the kids rent a boat, but it is many hours before the sail off on the trail of ugly dog. By now, the ugly dog was already hundreds of miles ahead of them, and with his ship and good crew every moment, he was getting further and further. Donald was sure of himself that it is not speed that will decide the victory of this race, but ruggedness. Northward they go. Icebergs loom into view. Donald told the children where they were, so he had to explain to them how the sextant and compass work. If they didn't have those devices, they would be lost. At 56 degrees north, the weather becomes rough. The seabirds began to flee for cover, which was a sign that a dangerous storm was coming. The little ducks tried to persuade Donald to stop during the storm, but Donald saw the storm as an opportunity to overtake the ugly dog. He wanted to go through everything like the Vikings did. The little ducks wanted Uncle Donald to forget, at least for a moment, that he was a rugged type. Far ahead, the ships of ugly dog are taking a beating. The warship could not go with the storm. The ugly dog gave the order to continue without them. He is not only ugly, but also mad. Recklessly, ugly dog drives his ship between the bergs. It's too risky, the ship's captain told him. But the ugly dog was determined in his purpose and took out his gun, saying that he would own North America and that he would be the first to find the golden helmet. Then the ugly rat started talking nonsense. I hate this stinking rat. I hope he doesn't make it to the end of the comic. The ship crashed on the rocks. Captain Dog barked at the ugly dog because they were wrecked because of his stupidity. A few hours later, the storm stopped. Donald and the little ducks reached the ugly dog and saw that his crew was leaving in lifeboats to the south. The little ducks started celebrating. The ugly dog will not reach the golden helmet before us. To Donald, it looked like they were the sure winners, but several miles from them, an ugly dog and an even uglier rat were rowing on in a lifeboat without a sextant or a compass. That night fog closes in. The pea soup kind. The little ducks thought of stopping until the fog cleared, but Donald decided to continue and said that he could orient himself with the help of a compass. The little ducks remembered that you can see icebergs with your ears if you listen to the echo. They started yelling. Miles later. Donald and crew were in the fog trying to find their way around using the echo, but there were no more icebergs around them. An ugly dog heard them from a distance, approached them and stole their boat. They stayed in the lifeboat with nothing. Next morning. The little ducks were confused and Donald was angry. They wanted to give up, but Donald ordered them to row. One little smart duck started thinking that they needed a sail and the other not so smart one said, if they had wings, they could fly and pull. Oh my God. These are disabled ducks. They really can't fly. The ducks try to row, but they lack the brawn. Donald realized that he has no chance because he is not as strong as a horse or as capable as a duck and that his only hope is if the boss dog arrives before the ugly dog at the headland. But the helicopter from boss dog broke down. The engines burned out and the pilot said it would take three days to fix it. Yes, I forgot to say. But the curator has been having troubles too.
The boss dog complained that he didn't have time. The pilot told him not to bother and showed him the direction to the place he was looking for and said it was 100 miles away. Are you going to read this? Please, come back to normal and don't talk more than you need to. The seas are cruel, but sometimes they have a kind moment. Shut your mouth before I shut you down. You sound like you drank the milk of the big black elephant from part one. The little ducks saw the wreckage. It was the ship of the ugly dog. They found the canvas. We'll talk later. The wreckage is a priceless find. Out of it, they fashioned a mast and mounted a sail made of canvas sea anchor. The wind blew into their sails and they followed the sun as long as it could be seen. And then like true Vikings, they continued northward following the North Star. Donald had to check the map to see how far north they had to travel. Donald saw that they needed two more days in this slow tub to get there. At least they reached elevation 59 west towards the coast. They were looking for a headland in the shape of a cross. The ugly dog was right when he said that the view of the coast there is almost uglier than the view of himself. They range up and down the coast for hours. They were looking for an island in the shape of a cross. Donald and the little ducks were on one side of the island, and the ugly dog and the even uglier rat were on the other side. Unfortunately still alive, the ugly rat suggested to the ugly dog that he should sue someone for his disappointment. The ugly dog saw Donald and the little ducks. He ordered the even uglier rat to hit them with a ship and sink them. Donald said that he would be a nice kind-hearted landlord. Again, they were lucky that he didn't shoot them. Very kind of him. The lady that's known as Lucky is fickle. Suddenly she seems to turn against Ugly Dog. The engines broke down. The ugly crew was stuck fixing the boat, but Luck smiled on the ducks. They realized that the waves had cut through the neck of Headland and that they were in the right place. In the meantime, the ugly team repaired the ship and they saw that the ducks had found the golden helmet. By the seven teeth of the sea witch, screams Azure Blue. They found the golden helmet. An ugly dog and an even uglier rat immediately started towards them to steal the golden helmet from them. They sneaked up on them, stole a helmet, and an ugly dog proclaimed himself the emperor of North America and called them his slaves. But luckily, the boss dog appeared, threw a stone at the ugly dog's head, and took the golden helmet, saying sadly that it is best to throw the helmet far into the sea. So for a time at least, the fate of North America is safe. The boss dog told Donald to sail eastward, toward deep water. The boss dog was tired from the long hike. He could not trust anyone to keep the golden helmet and the map, not even Donald. The ugly rat was trying to become his lawyer and in return he was asking Canada if he would make him the owner of North America. As the minutes dragged past, a change comes over the tired curator. Suddenly, the ugly rat managed to brainwash the boss dog. Boss dog has decided that he wants to own North America. He wanted to manage the country in favor of the museum and that everyone must visit the museum twice a day. They will make parties in the museum and museums at every corner. The strain of that hundred mile hike takes its toll. Donald quickly took the golden helmet. He wanted to throw it into the sea, but he couldn't. And he wanted to become the king of North America. He wanted to leave everything to the people as they have now. He just wanted to charge them for the air. Donald will put a meter on everyone's chest and it will cost them every breath. The little ducks were mad at Donald because he turned out to be a dirty snake. Old Olaf's helmet must carry an evil charm for Donald has certainly become as mean as the Vikings of old. Donald was worried that the others would try to steal the golden helmet from him. He said they had to get rid of them. The ugly rat suggested throwing them out on the iceberg, which they did. The little duck thought they were doomed, but there's no giving up. Uncle Donald needs to get to the land first. The little duck stole Uncle Donald's compass. It will hardly be possible to find land without a compass. Others are worried whether anyone will be able to rescue them. Things are in a fine mess. Donald is lost in the northern ocean. The kids and the curator and Azure drift helplessly in the mist on an iceberg. Donald and the ugly rat were lost. They couldn't see the sun from the clouds to orient themselves. And the weather forecast said the sky would be overcast for days. The kids have a talk. The little ducks learned at school that icebergs move to the south and that the wind blows from the north. They found some axes and got the idea to shape the iceberg into a ship so that the iceberg would go even faster. That night. The ugly rat said that he thought they were sailing in circles and that they should turn off the engines and save gas. But Donald thought he saw the light. 
They continued and hit the shore. What was shining were the eyes of the polar bear, which was chasing them on the mast. Donald asked the ugly rat what to do. He replied that he should ask the bear because he is now the captain of the ship. In the morning, when the bear saw the ugly rat, he went to vomit everything he had eaten the night before. Donald and the rat ran out of food. Donald said he would give California and his birth mother for a hamburger. Donald was frustrated that the owner of North America could be starving. After a few more days, Donald realized that he had no right to Olaf's helmet and that he wanted to get something for nothing. The ugly rat said that it was legal, but Donald concluded that it was wrong. And he saw Olaf's Viking ship coming for revenge. They were little ducks on a ship-shaped iceberg. Donald was happy to see them, but the ugly rat said that he can still be king. He just has to take away their compass and food. But he didn't want to. The ugly rat got angry and decided that he would be the owner of North America. But a small duck hit him in the head with a fish. The rat fell into the sea together with the golden helmet and the map. Oh yes, I hope this ugly rat will not emerge from the sea again. Me too, but it's not over yet. One little duck sadly watched the helmet sink and regretted that no one would be the owner of North America. The other duck said that it should be like that and kicked him in the ass. So once more, Donald is a guard in the museum. Donald thought how that rugged life had its points, but the customer interrupted him and asked where he could find embroidered lampshade. He started to explain to him where to find it, but then he too became interested in embroidered lampshades. And they went together towards the lampshade. The end. Everything is good when there are no rats.